present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. All right, we are here. Are we here? Yeah, I'm almost positive we are. Oh, we're here. It's just a matter of where is here. Maybe. Uh, well, I, I, I wish it we were in another a dimension. dimension or a parallel Ooh. universe, something, a place more positive than here. Like the land of, of Ooze. Or was it Oz? Don't pay any attention to that man behind the screen. The oldest trick in the book. Looketh over, th looketh over there. Don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain. That's right. It's like Republicans. Oh, you better pay attention to them. Well, I heard... Um, you see, Mr. Moore. Old, old, ugly turtle head is yeah, upset. Yeah, he wants credit, baby. He wants credit. That's right. For something Obama did, right? Yeah, well, uh, Obama uh, helped the do. The president doesn't, you know, have control over the economy and stuff of that nature that people think he does. No. But, you know, no, it's like certain a... things that were put in place helped. But not from Mr. McConnell. Mr. McConnell. And his ilk. Mr. McConnell and his ilk, aside from the fact he's the, uh, he's the greatest walking advertisement to birth control today, known to man, aside from his, his uh, and turtles are usually cute, but not this turtle. I was just going to say, please don't insult turtles. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want people to get the wrong idea about turtles when they think of Mitch McConnell, because turtles are actually very cute. But anyway, um... Miss, uh, Mitch McConnell and his ilk, the only thing they know how to do is um, is pretty much uh, steal your tax dollars, take vacations. Obstruct. Yeah, they don't work. They don't work. They just... Oh, uh, what did they, they, they don't do anything, what you know, that positive. Person, that person in, what, in your group... <laughs> say the other day, oh well the Republicans put so many bills out there. Yeah, crap. Yeah, crap bills. Who the hell is going to vote on them? Bills that only help the rich. Damn. They, they, there, there is not one positive thing they ever did except for Dwight D. Eisenhower who was the last of the nice guy Republicans. There's not one positive thing they did for mainstream and the little guy the poor. You know, not one positive thing. I'm going to tell you one thing. President Richard Nixon was held back from doing one good thing that this country needs. An annual income for everyone. An annual income? Yeah. You mean to put everybody on salary? Yeah. Well, that's not good because then they can make you work a lot of hours. You don't get paid for overtime. From the government, from taxes. That has nothing to do with a corporation. No. You wouldn't have to have welfare then. You wouldn't have to have food stamps then. In other words... That's how you could get rid of those things. In other words, it would, it would have been like um, a good thing, like Social of Security. And, and, you know, Social Security that the Koch brothers want to gut is is not an entitlement. I got news for all these people. It's not an entitlement. They, they say that to bring up the people against it, but no, yeah, they want to. They want to gut everything. It's an insurance policy with you yeah. and the corporation pays. The the uh, the. But the corporation doesn't want to pay its half anymore. No. That's the problem. The imperialism yeah. imperialism of uh, modern day twenty first century. The imperialism of the United States of America would be, I guess, the Koch brothers, uh, uh, Monsanto, Bill Gates, uh, uh, Peter Brabeck of Nestle, who wants to pretty much uh, keep you from drinking water unless you pay him for it. That's right. Yeah, th owns. This is all part of the new imperialism, uh, which is the uh, oligarch, the, 
uh, fascist oligarch of the United States of America. And because uh, they are better than us and they own that stuff. Yeah, they're, they think they're better than That's us. That's correct. Exactly. Uh, I, I read an article that there is, uh, and I have no idea why it's there, they found mercury in the uh, high fructose corn syrup. What the hell is mercury doing? Yeah. Unless it's deliberate poisoning of the mainstream. Well, what the hell do we need corn syrup in, 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 in fructose for in the first place? That alone, you know? That alone is, my God, it, it's toxic to your body. The Delaney Amendment used to prevent anybody from putting anything on the market that could cause cancer. Nobody listens to, I don't even know if it's in effect anymore, but nobody listens to it, obviously, because they are messing with our food real bad. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, and they're allowed to. That's the problem. Because the United States government is bought and paid for. I mean, uh, that's why the corporations uh, write the laws and everything. That's why people pay so much attention to the Koch brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, of course they pay attention to a lot of the the uh, the idiots of the Republican Party that are that are no longer um, uh, uh, relevant anymore. You know, like if uh, uh, Sarah Palin says something real stupid, which is always, mm -hmm. you know, it's news, but it's right now it's just her opinion. Uh, but before I get to Chisler's Hall of Shame, which is a good one this week, because it, it's something personal that happened uh -huh. to old James P. Madonna. Uh -huh. You know, before I get to anything, let me, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, viewers, for being so rude. You know, this show is not um, rehearsed or uh, scripted at all. Totally ad lib. That's why... We wing it. Hold on. Now, welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. We are coming to you live from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. It is uh, January 2015, and I am here with what my illustrious. What? What day? Oh, it's Saturday. I no, I know it's Saturday. What day is it? Oh, I don't do that anymore. Why not? Because I don't want our topics to become outdated. Well, the topic won't be outdated. The day will. I don't want anything to be outdated because we discuss universal themes. That's correct. But, but uh, if I mention the day, people are going to look at the day and go, Oh, gee, this is an old show. Well, uh, why am I watching it? You know. And they'll look at it and say, Oh, my God. This has been going on since 1975. Yeah. You well, see? well, yeah, but you know how many, you know how many nitpicky. Uh, Stop with listening to people like, like that, that. Like that Joe Johnson, who's been, who's been pushing our buttons, leaving all kinds of insulting comments on YouTube. I'm not pushing my buttons. You know how many people I got to deal with, deal with with their stupid comments that they're bored. Don't deal with. Them. Uh, you know what Don't I told? watch the show. You know what I told them? We're not here to entertain you. Board. Well, not... watch the show then. Oh, we're, we're, we're. I says, what? We're here to entertain you? This is, this is, uh. He's only trying to personally attack you. And then if I, guess what? Then if I do a show trying to be funny for two hours, I bet he's gonna leave a comment that I wasn't funny enough. Of course he will, because he don't like the show. Well, don't watch Period. the, don't watch the friggin' show. Well, tell him that then, instead of this going I, back and I forth. do, but if you go, but he tends to come back like a, like a, unless I ban him, I could do that. Don't listen to him, that's even better. You don't have to ban him. Let I don't want to give people reasons to criticize and, 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 po and post Why not? things. When you tell the truth, people criticize. Yeah, but not stupid comments like yes, his. Yes, they do. Uh, what do you think they're getting? If they were going to give you proper comments, they would be believing your side. Like like intelligent input. Exactly. Like a uh, right wing troll uh, uh, contributing something uh, 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 meaningful to the uh, dialogue, to the course, conversation. I don't know if that's possible, but no, it yeah. never happens. 
they just resort to name calling and um, ad hominem attacks. And how many grits attacks and they ad hominem and they um, and you respond to them. They get under. They rile me up like Freddie Blass used to get riled up. They rile me up. Well, they rile you up for some reason that's in you because you're 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 you're. Well, I'm you're never to going to. Uh, 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 I'm a, trying to appeal or a pre, uh, 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 all the people all the time. I'm trying to make a success of this organization. Not with those people. I know, because they're well, enemies. They're, they're adversaries. Exactly. They're adver For some reason... That's like going to ISIS and saying, Hey, ISIS, you know, don't jump my head off, okay? Nah, don't well, jump my head Why don't we all get together for yeah, a cafe latte and yeah, cappuccino? Yeah, yeah, there you go. And some scones and some croissants. And we'll, we'll, we'll sit around and discuss things. Yeah. That's what the ultra-liberal Pollyannas want to do. They want to negotiate... Because the ultra-liberal, if that's what you want to Pollyanna. call Pollyanna. Yeah. Whatever. They believe that all things can be accomplished through dialogue and uh, 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 getting together and, uh, you know... Doesn't happen with evil, though. Of course not. You no. can't compromise with evil because when you do the... when you when you use the evil's tools, the devil's tools, you become the devil. Like Mr. Cheney. Yeah. We have to come from the dark side. What about that very deep Twilight Zone episode titled The Howling, where at the end it said that the one of the weaknesses of man is the inability to recognize Satan because because he's so tricky and 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 he, he, he appears as an angel of light. And he lies in such a special way that people are fooled. Counterfeit Christianity. And I'm, there it is. and I'm glad you mentioned that because that is part of what I want to say. Ah. I forgot to introduce you. All right, uh, uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I want to introduce my the voice that you hear in the background, the disembodied spirit, uh, my illustrious uh, co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this week, sir? Cold. Cold. Uh, cold. Uh, what? Cold. Oh, you're chilly? And I hate it. I'm cozy. I'm cold. I'm cozy. But anyway, uh, before I do my Chisler's Hall of Shame, and it's a doozy too, you were mentioning counterfeit, phony Christians, or whatever you want to call them, zealots, cultists, uh, whatever. Counterfeit Christians, let's just call them counterfeit Christians. Yeah. They're usually right-wing, fundamentalists, okay. Um, I noticed that they're coming out of the woodwork these days because the media tends to like to cover all the, all the crazy things that they say. Stupid things, too. Uh, they all think they have a bat phone to God, or stovepipe to God. They don't really know the Bible, because if they did, they wouldn't make such idiotic, asinine statements. They're usually very hateful, which kind of goes hand in hand with the right wing. But they are right wing, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, they seem to be interfering, or wanting to interfere or influence politics. Well, if that's the case, I think we should end all tax exemptions for political pastors Bingo. and evangelists. If you want to stick your Pinocchio nose in the government, well then pay taxes like everyone else. That's, that's the regulation. Now, what's the problem? Church and state. Somebody does not enforce the regulation. It's not being enforced. That's correct. Because... Same thing with Wall Street. Be right. Because for some reason, the right wing, the Republican Party, likes having them around and agrees with their craziness. And just like Wall Street, they can do whatever they want. They can gamble with our money, piss it away. They could uh, 
it's it's deregulation but deregulation for the wealthy not the little guy is is a, is a little mom and pop store on main street uh deregulated and and get, and get all kinds of subsidies and tax breaks no no not at all they'll throw them in a who's gal oh yeah well they want debtors prisons back Oh yeah. Well, then there's going to be an awful lot of people working for slave labor in the privatized prisons. There you go. You won't have any problem filling them up because the corporations will be very happy. There's very a, happy. There's a lot of people that had to file personal bankruptcy, um, and because of the system that. The fat cats and our politicians created. The two-party system is so rotten to the core and corrupt that, and so broken that there is no repairing it like some people want to. And the only hope is, what is to... It? What is it? Who was it? Uh, John Kerry? Uh, the Secretary of State John Kerry? I think he, he said that uh, Mr. Snowden should have worked within the system? Ah, uh, no! Democrat John It doesn't Kerry work. Work within the system? Yes. And well, what does that mean? Don't blow the whistle on anybody. That's right. So, that blow makes me... Blow it to your upper supervisor, and then he'll do nothing with it. That doesn't or they'll get rid of it. That doesn't sound too good. Of course for, not. For a Democrat to say that, just like it doesn't sound good, that Hillary Clinton is making nice nice with Monsanto. That doesn't sound good at all. Or that uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse Ventura was a little too chummy with Donald Trump on his podcast. Hey, buddy, let's get together again and play golf. Why can't he get together and play golf with somebody nice like Ralph Nader? Take him to golf, to play golf. You know? You Don't play golf with Donald Trump. The first thing Donald Trump wanted to do if he was ever elected is get rid of Obamacare. Well, what's he going to replace it with? Well, that was part of the, that was like over 50 times, I believe. The count uh, just goes out of sight. 50 times uh, were uh, 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 the, the bills that the Republicans put forward. Well, who the hell is going to vote for them? But guess what? They also did an investigation and found out that the Republicans did not have any alternative to, to the things they want to cut, like Obamacare. They, were, they had no alternative. They just want to gut them, cut them, guarantee the money that they end up starving out the poor with, they're just going to give it to That's the corporations. Correct. That's As more subsidies. Hey, the Koch brothers probably want to gut everything for the little guy because they want more subsidies. Well, as far as I know right now, as it stands, the day, the things are in place now for when the day comes that the banks do their badness again. Any money you have in that bank is now there. It's no longer yours. Your savings, your CDs, your checking accounts. Lock, stock, and barrel. Whatever. Lock, stock, and barrel, it's their money. Because this is what deregulation is all about. That's their money. This is, uh, uh, it's a very serious People situation. People better wake up. People not only better wake up, but they better start paying attention and getting involved in the government and forget about partying and the music industry and sports get involved in your society and what's happening you know and people it's just don't care to your government apathy yeah you, know, you got to get it back though. you know I mean uh, uh, I somebody uh, a lot of people were saying yippee Hillary Clinton in 2016 I, I told them listen the Clintons Bill and Hillary are corporatist Democrats. Billery. Right, the Bill the Billery uh, the Billery team, the Billery yeah. twins. They are corporatist Democrats. Right. They will be the lesser of the two evils 
in the case of what we've had, a lot lesser, but are Americans uh, sick and tired of always settling for the lesser of the two evils? Got to start paying attention to uh, progressive independence. Uh, pay attention to people like Barry Sanders, you know. Bernie. I'm sorry, Bernie Sanders. I keep on making that mistake. Barry Sanders is a football player? I have no idea. Some, anyway, Bernie Sanders, uh, uh, independent uh, progressive from uh, Vermont. Mm. Anyway, um, let me do um, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Ah, oh, look at this here. Because what do we got here? Ooh. It's not something you want, that's for sure. You can have it. You bought that? This is this was our new toaster by Sunbeam. Hey, I think it's an yeah, it's an American big company. name. It's an American company. I don't know about that. It's nice. It's uh, Sunbeam.com. Let me see. Oh, how nice! It's Sunbeam. Um, it's made in China. There you go. It's made in China. Uh, Sunbeam Products seems to have its headquarters in Boca Raton, Florida, uh -huh. but it's made in China. What else is new? There you go. It's a nice little toaster. Sunbeam. Sunbeam. Okay. All right. We didn't have it that long. Uh -oh. All of a sudden, we smell something funny in the in the house. We. Follow the scent, we end up in the kitchen, and our nose takes us to the where the, where the Sunbeam toaster is. Look what happened. The top melted away. Well, it's plastic. I never in my life have ever seen or had a toaster that by using it melts, the actual appliance melts yeah. away. So and melts. Never. Have I ever seen the purpose of a toaster is to toast the toast, the bread, on the inside. not to toast the whole friggin' toaster. Ah. We 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 did not have this appliance that long. It's it is it, it, it's fairly brand new. You see it in the camera? Yeah. Knock on it. Is that metal or is that plastic? Plastic. Not no, it on the side. Metal. That's metal. No, it's all plastic. All right, well, except there's your the top, but but the plastic was was originally, you know, yeah, were, the, were by the part you see this jagged. This was all right, yeah. plastic, and it melted. Yeah, well, oh, you know what? There you go for American uh, made American companies that have everything assembled in China. Good old mainland China, good old American ingenuity for you, and uh, I wouldn't buy well, tell you, any American product. Any kind of ingenuity period. that involves something electric and plastic is stupid. I think this is a potential fire hazard, no folks. No kidding. No kidding. No Melted. Kidding. See that? And talk about planned obsolescence. Gotcha. <laughs> Sunbeam. There you go. Oh, there were there was there were sunbeams coming out of my eyes when I when I saw this. You're lucky you caught it early because it could have been uh, you know fire hazard. Yeah. Yep. Well, being that it's a wee too late. I mean, I could play a big violin, but. Well, I would write the company. And if they want the damn thing back, they can have it. But uh, I would ask for a new one. And not the uh, plastic metal. Well, this this appeared on on the internet. Ah. So you know what? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to contact them. If if I if there's not a direct email, I'm not going through all these pre-made uh, questions and answers. I'm not going through that. If I cannot email a a bona fide customer mm -hmm. service, in black and white. Not customer service in the Philippines, where they got, where they apologize to me yeah. and say, "We're very sorry you experienced this, sir. We're very sorry, bro. I, I just want to take the time to tell you how much." Listen, don't apologize to me. Tell your upper management, tell the executive uh, branch, 
of Sunbeam. Give me a new one. That this is a piece of shit. Yeah. It's a piece of shit. Now, should I take this with me when I leave, or is there a place for me to throw it? I, I would try to get a, a no, new one. I'll take it with me. So, you know, you'd have to have this old one. Please, folks, try not to buy American products, because... And don't because buy a toaster that's plastic. Ten times out of ten, it will be most likely assembled in China Ugh. with the cheapest... No, it's assembled in the United States and it, made in China. The cheapest materials yeah. possible. That's what they do. Yeah. So, to conclude, shame, shame, shame on you, Sunbeam Corporation, for having selling garbage like this. Uh, a Sunbeam is a famous household uh, name in appliances. They've been around for many decades and I'm very disappointed but not shocked. Mm -hmm. But I, this is the first time I've seen a toaster actually toast itself. Exactly. <laughs> actually melt. You know, and it's it, it's a fire hazard. It, it stunk up the house. Mm -hmm. You know, a burnt plastic smell. And uh, but anyway, that's that. Uh, a new welcome inductee into our Chisler's Hall of Shame. Now let us sink our teeth into these readings. Uh, that's the first time we had a real good, uh, uh, robust Chisler's Hall of Shame. Yeah, that Mitch McConnell and all those Republicans. Ain't that funny? That, we are going to read about Mitch McConnell right now. They're going to be now. so upset when when Barack Obama gets that veto pen in his hand. Oh, the pipeline! Of course, they approved uh, the Congress approved the. Uh, but the, the pipeline. The pipeline. The. Uh, uh, what's the full uh, name? Of XL. It? The XL. Pipeline. Pipeline. Yeah. Which Running is, from Alberta down to Texas. Which is not going to... To the refinery. It's not going to produce the jobs that Republicans... No, it's not. ...say it's going to produce. No, it's not. And whatever jobs it does produce, which is a, a, a delay drop... Delay it. Delay it will be temporary. Drop yes. in a bucket will be temporary. That's correct. All right. Continue, sir. Mitch McConnell. Okay. The new majority leader of the United States Senate right. thinks the United States economy is improving because his party now has complete control of Congress. Isn't it a little late? Well, it was to, fast, to, wasn't it? A little late to take uh, credit for something mm -hmm. another man did. Well, it was very fast. That's what I was. Hey, Barack Obama's numbers speak for themselves. He, considering the mess he inherited, he did an outstanding job. Where has this man, who publicly stated four years ago that his number one goal as minority leader was to obstruct every initiative by President Obama? That's all he did. Where has he been residing? Obstructing on vacation. Yeah, it's true. He hasn't noticed that for these four years, every part of the economy, jobs, stock market, corporate profits, budget deficits, has been consistently moving in the right direction. Despite efforts of the party of McConnell to undermine the recovery. That's exactly what they were doing. Either he has been in space for some time. Or he looks like it. Or his head has been in the sand. It looks like his head has been in a tortoise shell. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, those right-wing fundamentalist zealots that are always in the spotlight, uh, they're like John, Pastor John Hagee Hage, of yeah. Texas. Uh, Fisher. Mike Huckabee. Oh, jeez. Come Huckabee. on, that guy. He's, He's another one. Phony boy. What a joke he is. Uh, uh, Fisher. He's got a new book. A book? Mr. Huckabee. Yeah, it's a new book. But he sounds like a horse's ass. He is a horse's ass. But that horse's ass 
ran for president of the United States of America. So did Rick Santorum, the other nut. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, God. You know, I, I, I posted what you told me Wednesday. They, you said, is a is a an, is an egg Sorry. a chicken? Right. Even if it's fertilized. Right. Is it a chicken? No, it's not a chicken. At that stage, is it a chicken? Yeah. Because they say an embryo is a chicken. Is a human being. They don't say potential human being. They say a human being. Well, then a, fertil then a fertilized hen in a hen house is a chicken. Correct. But, but they don't call it a chicken. Correct. Hmm. The Connecticut Supreme Court ruled on Thursday that state officials are not violating the rights of a 17-year-old girl by forcing her undergo cancer chemotherapy she doesn't want. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. This is it. The decision came in the case of the girl known in court documents as Cassandra C. Who will be free to make her own medical decisions when she turns 18 in September. Yeah, but, uh, what are they doing? They try, does she have a legal guardian or her parents? Her parents her pa are against it too. They don't, the state doesn't care. Okay, so the parents by right should, should be able to choose in her form of medical treatment. Should. Should. I mean, Many, many people, the success rate of alternative and, and natural therapies are very high. I mean, Suzanne Summers, you don't hear about her breast cancer returning. So on and so on, it goes on and on. Chemotherapy came from the mustard gas of World War II. Lovely. One, I think. Uh, and I believe it's all predicated upon one case, one case that has ever survived. Otherwise, there is no proof that chemotherapy works at all. But then that doesn't mean much in allopathic medicine, does it? Because they've never done any proofs on bypass or taking tonsils out or taking hysterectomies etc well, etc like the uh, late great Carlton Fredericks used to say with things like chemotherapy treatments like chemotherapy it's uh, throw you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater well not only that and vaccines too by because the way because of deregulation and the rest of it the doctor who is treating you with the chemotherapy is making money on that treatment Chem because he buys it and it sells it to you for a lot more. Chemotherapy and 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 uh, orthodox uh, officialdom and cancer treatment is big business. Thank you. Not curing you the best what way we, possible. How many years have we known that? How many years ago did Gary Knowles' articles run in Penthouse Magazine exposing the Cancer Society? Gary Knoll, Dr. Gary Knoll has cured people with even pancreatic cancer, the dreaded, infamous pancreatic cancer. There are natural substances that will cause cancer cells to self-destruct. But the point is that it ain't going to get on the market because of this crap. Because of money. And in this situation here, it is the state who believes that they are the mom and pop and etc. And they will tell you what to do. And the state is in bed with the big big farmer racket. Big farmer yeah, racket, well, yeah. big agra, the food industry, no rolls, regulation against them. Rolls, no. toxins, uh, GMOs, Monsanto, the, the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. The FDA, USDA, the government, what have you, they're all in bed with the people 
that grease their palm. She, <coughs> with the support of her mother, had fought against the six-month course of chemotherapy. Wow, the poor girl. The case is centered on whether the girl is mature enough to determine how to treat her Hodgkin lymphoma, okay. which she was diagnosed with in September. She is confined in a room at Connecticut Children's Medical Center in Hartford, where she is being forced to undergo chemotherapy, which doctors said would give her an 85% chance of survival. Oh, yeah, because you got to deal with the side effects of chemo. Without it, they said there was a near certainty of death within two years. My, my mother had that form of cancer and they just gave her radiation treatments. And she's well, fine now. As far as I know, there are two forms of the Hodgkin. Okay. And the one form is very curable, you know, on its own. There's, there's non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's, right? Yeah. No, there's Hodgkin and Hodgkin. To one or see it to form, yeah. Well, yeah, if it's, if, it, if it's in one mass, well, let's say a tumor, and yes, it's yes. in one area, it could be zapped very easily. You, you got a, a proton therapy, uh, which, which uh, zaps the... Uh, the lymphoma, though, can metastasize to the lymph nodes all around. That's the possibility. Yeah. But when you look at these things involving cancer, you have to understand what cancer is. Cancer is a systemic problem with the immune system, which normally takes care of it every single day. Well, damaged, body. damaged DNA causes cells to replicate out of control. That's more or less what cancer is, but right? But normally, your body takes care of this. Attacks the uh, abnormal cells. So that's why when you're dealing with the cancer, you must deal with the immune system. You know what? Chemotherapy, radiation, etc. lowers the immune system. You know what's much more complex than cancer is, is autoimmune diseases. Uh, multiple sclerosis, lupus, Lou Gehrig's disease. Yes, I mean, because your body's attacking itself. How do you deal with that? You suppress your immune system, but then you need your immune system. But then if your immune system is too strong, your autoimmune disease gets worse. Yes. Yes. But will they ever find an answer if they're going to just continue with their stupid treatments? No. No. No, uh, the, uh, one of the best alternative uh, medicine holistic treatments for autoimmune is heavy duty antioxidants in optimal doses because they feel that the uh, free radical damage, the uh, free radicals uh, are causing this to happen. Uh, I'm talking about like resveratrol and all the anthocyanidins and the vitamin E, vitamin C. Yeah. Yeah. The search continued on Thursday for the owner of a nearly six foot long snake that slithered out of the toilet in an office restroom on Tuesday in downtown San Diego. Well, if it's San Diego and it's six feet long, then it sounds like an escapee. If you would have said Florida, then I would have said, yeah, Burmese python, you know, they, they escaped, they propagated. But, um, An urban legend of major metropolitan sewer systems and the worst fears of one Stephanie Laska co-founder of Vertical PR Plus Marketing came together in her office bathroom 
when the Colombian rainbow boa flicked its tongue on her ass and poked its head out from within the porcelain throne. So she thought she, she took a dunk, but her, 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 her fecal matter had the head of a snake. Oh my God. So she almost got a uh, proctology exam by that forked tongue. That must have been frightening, having that face staring up at you. You know, I mean, but doesn't the snake get claustrophobia squeezing through that hole? With, with water in it? I mean, it, I don't know how to get in there. Oh, I don't know. Well, it vertically approached her, so <laughs> the word vertical is very applicable here. You gotta admire them because when they get into a pipe or something of that nature, they keep moving forward. How the hell you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel? The unknown? Can a snake yeah. move backwards? I don't know. No. That's you know, but why why venture into a, into a, a very place. narrow, dark place with no air? Hold your breath as a reptile and just venture forward. There must be some senses that cause the snake to be able to do this Ugh. without fear. This is every person's worst nightmare. I thought my eyes were deceiving me. Officials said the snake probably had not just entered the plumbing because it was underweight and shedding. But they don't know how it could have survived for an extended period of time. Well, I'll give you one guess. For it to come up through the toilet, it must know where the sewer system is. It's San Diego, right? It well, must got in there somehow. It must know where the sewer system is. If it knows where the sewer system is, uh, there's something, there's a creature called rats, you know. Uh, 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 sewers are often very moist and, uh, and warm. There's roaches down here, you know. It's, uh, I would say rodents. It has been wonderful to see the public outpouring of respect and admiration for former New York Governor Mario Cuomo. Yeah, poor guy, yeah. Whose funeral I attended and for whom I worked for five years. Despite his being out of the public spotlight for more than 20 years, the enduring appreciation for Cuomo's passion, eloquence, and integrity is remarkable. Amazing, amazing man. If you've ever hear him being interviewed, and well, he also speeches. spoke at the Democratic conventions and stuff, and very progressive. Yeah, but he, he was right on the money. Whatever he said, yeah. I mean, he's, he that was, may be because his intellect principled courage will what the hell happened here well you son of a gun somebody cut the rest of my letter off really really well, I'll, I'll just it, read the other one on Cuomo is that so. so with the death of former New York Governor Mary Cuomo and Governor Christie's prime time hug with Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, I am compelled to sketch, at least in my mind, the dramatic contrast between these public figures in terms of character, personality, style, and wisdom. Oh, there's no comparison. God. Well, Mr. Christie is being forced to pay for his own transportation down there to play with Jerry again because uh, he did it on our dime really last time but he but he's always quick to point out moochers uh, oh yeah you know if you're a regular Joe Sixpack and you're you're getting something for nothing Christie's the first person to point his finger 
Oh, indeed. Not realizing that there are th three fingers pointing back at him when yeah. he points his finger. Get yeah. it? Yeah. In retrospect, as current New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said, in the eulogy for his father, Mario, at his core, was a philosopher, a poet, an advocate, a crusader, and a keynote speaker for our better angels. You write books? He was a man qualified to be president, but he chose not to run. It's true. In stark contrast, Christie is a bombastic bully, a jaded politician, and a false prophet. Mario Cuomo loved being governor of New York. Christie would love to be president and not governor of New Jersey. No, Christie would love to be emperor of the United States. Enough said. He said, Mario Cuomo was a gentleman. He was in touch with mainstream and and the poor and the people itself. You know, he was one of a kind. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously uh, humble because he knew he was qualified to be president and probably could have been, but he didn't want to, to do it. Yeah, well, it's very, it was very hard back then, I think, for an ethnic politician to be president possible, of possible the United Possible, possible it was that, possible it was that. But back then, you know, I mean, we think we're bad off today with the way it's rigged and all this other stuff. But back then, Tammany Hall and all this stuff, oh my God, to get anywhere in politics, you know, you had to suck a lot of ass and do a lot of shit, you know? And there were bosses like Tammany Hall or some bosses in certain regions that you had to please or they wouldn't give you their endorsement or whatever. You know what I mean? That's how it was done. Earth! That's where we are right now. Has a few more near twin planets outside our solar system. More? Tantalizing possibilities in the search for extraterrestrial life. Astronomers announced on Tuesday that depending on definitions, they have confirmed three or four more planets that are about the same size as Earth and are in the so-called Goldilocks zone. I've heard about that. Not too hot and not too cold. Well, there must be other suns in the area. For liquid water to form. These planets are likely to be rocky like Earth and not gas giants or ice worlds. Like Jupiter and Uranus. They get about the same heat from their star as Earth gets from the sun. Really? According to the latest results from NASA's planet hunting Kepler telescope. Is the Kepler the replacement for the Hubble? Or is it different? The Hubble is looking for different things and the Kepler is looking for different things. Okay. okay. But don't book your flights yet. <laughs> they may be close to Earth in size and probable temperature in the gargantuan scale of the universe, but they aren't quite close enough for comfort. Consider two of the new planets, the nearest to Earth discovered to date. If they have atmospheres similar to Earth's, a big if, one would be toasty, 140 some degrees, and the other would be hovering around zero. Life conceivably could evolve and adapt to those temperatures. Oh, and they aren't actually within commuting distance of Earth. Those two are 500 
and 1,100 light years away. Wow. A commuting distance. A light year is about 5.9 trillion miles. So you would have to try to, you would have to have the technology to utilize wormholes to make that shortcut. Warp speed! Make it so! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, we're, the, the universe, uh, it's a shortcut in uh, interplanetary or intergalactic... Uh, regions, regions. Regions, regions. Yeah. Oh, or quadrants, excuse me, quadrants. Quadrants? Quadrants. Well, quad is four. Remember the uh, the show in the, in the Star Trek uh, mode, uh, Voyager? Star Trek Voyager with um, McGrew as the captain of the... With the near the nearsighted captain, Captain McGrew. No, Mo Grew. It was Mr. she. Oh, she oh. was the captain. Oh, Mo, oh, the actress. That's correct. Yeah, I remember That's her now. Correct. Well, they were operating in like maybe one quadrant of the universe, and didn't have the ability to, you know, get to the other ones because it's so damn far. What's important, said. SETI Institute astronomer Douglas Caldwell, a study to author who presented the findings at the American Astronomical Society meeting in Seattle, is that astronomers are a bit closer to finding twins of Earth and answering the question, are we alone? Are we alone? I'm alone. Zachary Smith. I'm alone and I'm frightened, you bubble-headed booby. These planets do exist. We didn't know that before. But we're really looking for signs of life. We're not there yet. It will take many years, but this is the first step. It's the first step. First giant step. Yep. Well, I, I love uh, science uh, articles, and uh, I've been seeing uh, articles on um, aquaponics, which combines hydroponics with uh, uh, aquaculture, you know, raising fish, you know, where they, you, you raise tilapia in a tank in the water, uh, fertilizes your, your hydroponic garden and it's like self-sustaining I, I uh, I've been using the aquarium water to water and fertilize all my plants for a long time now and it really works great right we're gonna take a break it's time for lunch for yep. um, staff here at the newsletter sensor research center New Jersey and uh, we will be joined by our voiceover artist William H. Moore the third and we'll be right back uh, to finish off part two second half of this show and I just want to thank uh, Sash, uh, uh, Sash uh, he likes to pronounce it Sash Boyle for doing a wonderful very enjoyable show with me. It, it, it went great. Thank you, Sash Boyle. On trolls. On right wing trolls and other things. Uh, it went, I think it was almost an hour, 57 minutes, something like that. And I thank you for doing the show with me and uh, hopefully many more shows. Uh, Sash Boyle, my administrator for Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth Facebook group. And he's from San Diego, California. Thank you. And also, I want to say hello to my near dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, Miho. Dear, dear. Very near and dear. Very dear. Very near. Very dear and near, but not so near, yeah. but very dear. Okay. Hi, I'm William Moore. Wake up, people. Because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, 
this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. We're back with the second half of the show. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow the third for your words of wisdom and promo. Uh, before I forget, uh, where is it? For folks out there, forget everything you have heard from any Republican or teabag or fool. There is no trickle down economics. It never happened before won't happen now and unless the system changes it won't happen ever what we have is siphon up to the top 20 percent economics the devil's economics siphon up never trickle down and um, in order for things to trickle down that must mean you have to keep all American jobs in the US Otherwise, how on earth could they or trickle change down? that system? What? Change that system. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you have to penalize American companies for outsourcing by perhaps making them pay high tariffs on the products when they come back on cargo ships to, to U.S. ports. Or don't allow it in the first place. Wouldn't that be easier? Yeah. Japan doesn't allow it. As far as I know. It's called regulation. You know? Something the Republicans and conservatives do not believe in. They believe in a free market. And then they rig the market. <laughs> it's free for them. They rig the but market. But not for everybody else. You know what I mean? Hey, some big company comes along and they invent a product and they put it out selling it. Right. Do you think they want somebody else coming along with the same product at a cheaper price? Well, it's, part of, it's part of a real free market, isn't it? If it were, but it ain't because competition would be part of that and they don't really want competition they just say that yeah it, okay. look, it, it sounds good during a campaign hmm. to talk about competition keeps the prices down oh really oh yeah under normal circumstances if we had a fair system it does yeah well we don't have a fair system and I don't know how long it would stay fair. Because if we did. If you got two big companies banging heads about the same product. If we did have a fair system, then all the tax breaks would go to the uh, small businesses, the middle class. If we had a fair system, they wouldn't need tax breaks. M Main Street. Uh, true. Now, you, uh, somebody uh, mentioned that on one of your groups the other day, and I, I said, so what that means is basically that... Uh, Back in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, what? These companies weren't making profits? Of course they were making profits. And they were being taxed at 91% or whatever. So this is a bunch of bullshit about 
Oh, well, you better lower my taxes because my, I ain't making no profits here. If you weren't making any profits, pal, you wouldn't be in business. Oh, they always okay. cried, Rich. That's correct. Because they want it all. They want the whole pumpkin pie. Okay? Yeah, they don't even... Like people like the Koch brothers, I don't even think they want to give mainstream uh, people like a crumb off the pumpkin pie, a piece of crust. The word give is anathema to all of them. Okay? They, they don't give. That's correct. They want to grab from you. That's why. Which is what they have been doing. Uh, yeah. For decades, they, they, they steal from the middle class taxes. Yeah, to uh, give to themselves the And elitist. now they got the regulation put through the other day in the great old Republican Congress that whatever happens again with the Wall Street bankers and etc., we will be on the hook again. Now the, the uh, taxpayer. The Robin Hood tax in Europe, right? It was something that was some sort of Robin Hood tax uh, recently passed. What does it do? In Europe, um, well, I, I'm not sure because I always thought that the rich pay their fair share in taxes in, in European countries, which they... Well, supposedly do, they do. They so certainly do not have the loopholes that we have over here. For instance, like for GE, who doesn't pay any taxes at all and gets a subsidy. From us. Right, or the oil, oil companies. Or oil, depreciation and allowance and etc, etc, etc. You know, ExxonMobil makes billions of dollars in profits and they need subsidies. Something wrong here. There shouldn't be uh, the, um, the notion of being too big to fail. Uh, but it is. It is now etched in our laws. The little guy is is, um, is allowed to, to fail. That's correct. And that's the way capitalism works. The, the small businessman, the, the, main, street, business the main street businessman, the a little guy, he's allowed to fail. Right. Any, any guy under capitalism, as it's supposed to work, any guy who mis gets, makes mistakes and fails, Bye bye, and then someone comes along, and you know it's like um, it's like in the porn business. First of all, there will be this company who offers this products, and blah 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 blah, and they'll be around for a few years. All of a sudden, they disappear, mm -hmm. and another company comes along offering their same bullshit. Mm. That's how it works. You know. If uh, Goldman Sachs would have closed down, went bankrupt during the meltdown, etc., hey, somebody else would have come along and take over. Or we would have took over. The United States government, like in North Dakota, where the state has its own bank. Not some private entity, right? Like w Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, etc., etc., etc. You know what I mean? You do wrong, you get punished. Oh, they're so quick to say that for anybody else, especially if you're a poor person. You do something wrong, you must be punished. But we, since we write the laws and own the government, mm -hmm. we can do any damn thing we want. Tough noogies, pal. Well, you let some, you, you give somebody a hand, they want the whole arm. Oh, and they want more, the more they get away with it, the more they try to get away with it. Yeah, with, but they uh, say the poor do that. Well, they're always using the okay. poor as a scapegoat. Yeah, yeah. Just like I, like I was telling Sash Boyle, you know, they, they use people of color 
immigrants of color as a scapegoat. They use minorities as a scapegoat. They use the poor as a scapegoat. They use God as a front man. The ho homeless are, are, are scape scapegoat. They, they hide behind a false Christianity. And patriotism. Correct, because if you... How can you be a patriot if you want to destroy your government? Right. <laughs> right. You're you laughing like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, if you undermine the, 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 the good of the United States, what's good for the United States, if you undermine that and sabotage it, you're not a patriot. If you outsource American jobs, you're not a patriot. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay your fair share in taxes, you're not a patriot. Mm -hmm. So everything about the right wing is hypocritical. And Everything. dangerous. That's what people forget. Because it's not two ideas, Lib uh, Democrats and Republicans. It's not two ideas that fight with each other for votes. One idea is dangerous. Right, and by repeating the same lying propaganda over and over and over, they win over people that are not independent free thinkers and people that may already be racist like out in red states out yeah. down south and out west yeah. in these red states these people are, are already racist they already don't like people of color and immigrants of color still so fighting the civil war they're still fighting the civil war so when a republican candidate uh, tries to rile them up based on emotion it's very easy to win. Hold on. It's very easy to win them over yeah. in a, in a, in a election, which is what they do. They already believe that which you're selling. Okay. Snake oil salesman. Well, there's a sucker born every minute. P.T. Barnum said, right. You'll never get broke underestimating the intelligence of the American people. Underestimating? Yeah. Because if you estimated it correctly, they wouldn't buy your crap. But you can sell your crap to them because they ain't that intelligent. Yeah, I mean, if you if you were an honest man, you would you would. You would start your sales presentation and then you would stop and say, I can't go on with this, people. I gotta come clean. There you go. I'm trying to sell you a piece of shit. This thing is a joke. You don't really need this. Yep. Ain't gonna happen. You know, like a, like a stupid tchotchke or a novelty that really has no useful purpose. Dunzel. Dunzel! Change of pace. Tomato paste? I like tomato paste. Recently, a member of the family suggested that my mother Google the name of my sister's new live in boyfriend. Oh, what a nosy uh, investigator she is. Another family member said he had done it months ago. When mom did, she saw that he is a convicted sex offender. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in no favor of, of nosy uh, spies and snooping, but I guess she did it to protect her daughter. Uh, it's a good thing she, she did it, but I don't condone people who snoop, but this is important. We were all shocked, as he has been very good to my sister and other members of the family. What did he go to jail for, though? Sex offender! How? What is his um, cup of tea? Convicted sex offender. They don't say what kind. They didn't say what kind. Whether a boy or a girl or whether a minor or an adult. Well, obviously it was a minor. Mm, yeah. If you go around 
uh, groping women in public, you're you can be a convicted sex offender, and you know maybe but without involving minors. I would usually think it it, it applied to the minors. Yeah, and maybe they call it pedophile. So far, we haven't said anything to my sister or her boyfriend. And I am unsure what to do. I have a small child, see? Now we're getting it. It involved a minor. Am I shrewd? Am I psychic or what? I have a small child and it makes me nervous. When he's done, I'm going to educate you people about something very important. I don't know if my sister knows, and I don't know how to bring it up. Very, very delicate subject. I am upset with my family member because he didn't say anything immediately. Wow. I'm upset at my sister, if she knows, and hasn't been honest with us, and I am upset with this man. What should I do? Tough call. I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta do what's best for your loved ones, for your sister. I mean, I'd say she's got to be told, like, like pulling off a band-aid. Just get it over with. Ah! Quick. Dear Abby's answer is: first, let me tell you what not. Do not remain silent and stew. What? Stew. Beef stew? Yes, to be in turmoil. Oh, to oh. To ruminate. To right. think about this thing. And lose sleep over it. And lose sleep over it. Tell your sister everything you have written to me and ask if she's aware that her live-in boyfriend is on a sex offender website. Or you're gonna love my advice. If his offense concerned a minor child, it is possible that he is not supposed to be around children. Very true. And if he has been that, the authorities should like to know. But first, discuss this with your sister may or may not be able to put her fears or yours to rest. As long as you speak up, you know, while this noise is going on, just try to raise your volume. Okay, here it goes. Let me get my Blackthorn Shillelagh for emphasis. People out there, if there is anything you find on the internet that is of importance or uh, urgency, no matter what level, and it's something you need to, to save, to keep for the near future, uh, even to be used in a court of law, <laughs> what I want you to do is this. When you find the information, I want you to, um, if you have to, if you have to, I want you to zoom in on it by hitting control and the, uh, the plus sign. This will enlarge and zoom in. Uh, control and the minus will go back to normal. It'll zoom out. You zoom in on the photo and the data that you need to save. Then on the upper right hand side of your uh, keyboard, you hit the print screen button. Then you go down, you click start, uh, programs, accessories, paint. It's a Microsoft uh, feature, right? Or is it? Yeah, you, you go to paint. Then you right click. Or you go to the drop-down menu, menu by file and you save as. You're going to save this. And you name it. 
what it should be called and you put it in the appropriate file that you're not going to forget where it is. And you have a saved document that nobody could argue with. It has a photo, it has text, you have it saved. Like I said, before you save it, if you need to zoom in on it, you zoom in on it and you put it give it a good name and you put it where you're going to find it and then if your sister in this case explodes and says you're negative and you're sabotaging my relationship what you do is you send her an email and you attach this print screen attach it to um, an email and send it to the person and say I just sent you evidence. Open it up and look for yourself. In the case of a court, you want to print this out and bring it with you to court. That's it. It's my big tip for the week. Print screen and how to uh, utilize it in your favor. I also want to take this time to wish uh, the King of Clubs, uh, a good friend of mine from Perth, Australia, Paul Terrace Walkowinski's. Uh, happy birthday, Paul. It is his 65th birthday. Happy 65th birthday, uh, King of Clubs, club swinging, Paul Terrace Walkowinski. You have contributed so much to alternative uh, fitness, ancient warrior fitness and circular training. All right. For all the time Scoffy has beamed him up, for all the times he's charged across the galaxy on the Starship Enterprise, you would think getting from point A to point B would be a snap by now for actor William Shatner. He's a very busy man. It isn't. Getting to Spokane alone requires four airplanes. Really? He said. Four? Sounding a bit dazed. Spokane, Washington? Four? Given his busy schedule these days of juggling his live one-man show with television and film work, Traveling around Earth requires nothing less than a spaceship to be uncomplicated. Yeah, and he's got that new show on Aura TV about wine tasting. He's also got one on Thursday nights. I'm not sure if it's DIY. It's a new one. About houses and stuff. He's all over the place, man. He's like... He's, all, he's practically omnipresent. Well, that's what we're reading about right now. As usual, the ubiquitous and multi-talented Shatner is all over the place. At his age, in his 80s, he's doing all this. I start filming this weekend in Halifax. Nova Scotia. Then on Wednesday, I have to fly to from Halifax to Canada to Spokane to do my one-man show. That's on stage, by the way. Oh, really? It's a live performance? That's correct. What does he do? He talks about his life. <laughs> then, I fly to Los Angeles the next weekend and shoot Priceline.com uh, commercials. Yeah, he's, he does it with his daughter. They're, they're cute, actually. You seem like a nice fellow. Yeah, they're actually they're very enjoyable. The commercials with him and his daughter. Then I fly back to Halifax for another weekend. Week, excuse me, of filming. <laughs> then I fly back to Los Angeles. So it isn't so much doing the performances that are giving to me as 
getting to the venues. They should, uh, at the next heavyweight boxing championship title, they should have a, a match between William Shatner and the Gorn in a, in a uh, exhibition boxing. You are obsessed with this Gorn. Captain of the Gorn ship. I shall be merciful. On Friday, Shatner will appear at the Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown, New Jersey oh. to perform Shatner's World. His 90-minute stage piece in which he shares aspects of his life and his work. I have tried to make the show entertaining. I want you to feel my grief and sadness, and then laugh out loud. It's filled with laughter, he said. It's also filled with a lot of heart. It combines a lot of things that have happened to me in my life, that I have wanted to tell entertainingly and with passion. It is essentially my story. Shatner, of course, rose to iconic fame as Captain James T. Kirk on the hit 1960s show Star Trek. Mm. I got news for the writer here. It was not a hit. The first three years. In syndication, it became a hit. Like, but like not its three years on prime time television. Saturday nights. I was All the episodes before it got canceled were only three years. Three years. So like the Honeymooners, it became popular in syndication. Very just like, popular. Just like the Honeymooners. Very popular. Uh, I Love Lucy blew the Honeymooners off the air in the ratings. <coughs> but his career later evolved as few careers in show business do. He capitalized on his name and celebrity by transforming his quirky self-parodying persona into its own kind of brand. Shatner became a commercial spokesman for such companies as Priceline.com, often while poking a little fun at himself along the way. But far be it to suggest that he sold out. When he wasn't doing endorsements, he was reinventing his acting career and taking it to new heights starring in such television shows as T.J. Hooker with Heather Locklear Rescue 911 The Practice and Boston Legal yeah. That was a very young Heather Locklear that might have been her debut I think it was Yeah In November the 83 year old actor announced yet another chapter in his extensive career his first Kickstarter project to produce his new book, Catch Me Up. Amazing. For an 83 year old male, male no, no less, to be this active, this alert, this busy, is incredible at 83. The book offers a modern approach to teaching the over 50 crowd how to leverage their lifelong skill sets to create viable businesses and become entrepreneurs. Yeah. I want to dedicate this show really to, to William Shatner. I mean, he deserves it. I salute you, William Shatner. Multiple rewards are available for backers on Kickstarter, ranging from a $10 digital version of Catch Me Up to a $10,000 VIP reward that includes an evening with William Shatner himself. The book is to be published this month. I advocate that if you can't find a job, try selling yourself and your skills via social media, using Twitter, using Facebook. He noted that his generation, 
He didn't immediately subscribe to social media right away. I was very late to the game, he said. So I am encouraging people not to be fearful. I am simply suggesting how you might get yourself into the stream of knowledge that is out there and to encourage you that is that it is not difficult. He said going to Kickstarter route was very deliberate as the means of publishing the book reflects the form and substance of it along with wanting to collaborate directly with backers and fans to produce the book he said he wants to encourage people like Kickstarter to start their own businesses no matter how many new ways Shatner finds to diversify or reinvent himself he realizes that the fanatical following of Star Trek may be inescapable. It is inescapable. And while there might have been a time when he felt it was something to live down, now he sees things differently. Some years ago I wrote a book called Get a Life. <laughs> oh, about the Trekkies? Yeah. In the book, I discovered who it was that was coming to all these Star Trek conventions, and I concluded that they were coming really to see each other. Then, I had the occasion to do a documentary on the same subject, also called Get a Life, and I was able to go deeper. I found that there was a mythological component to Star Trek that hasn't been talked about very much. And so, there will always be those who just don't get it. And those yeah. who simply can't get enough. Well, Star Trek, to me, represents uh, science fiction quickly becoming science fact. It's not just a popular show in syndication. It, it, I mean, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of horror movies and, uh, I mean, old school horror movies, you know, not, not uh, disturbing, bloody, gory movies, but, you know, uh, hey. uh, monsters and spooky things I like. But also science fiction, I love that. And, then, and it's exciting seeing science fiction become science fact. So uh, I'm a big fan for that reason. and. Uh, you know, William Shatner sincerely does want to make amends with George Sakai. He doesn't have a, a, he doesn't hold a grudge against George, George Sakai about every about anything. But George Sakai has a problem with him. So he says he he says in a uh, discussion with his daughter, at our age, we shouldn't be doing this. Correct. It's ridiculous. It's petty. It's petty at, at, at their ages now, yeah. and I agree. So. It's like any faith-based philosophy, he said. You believe what you want to believe. Hey, that's true. You believe what you want to believe. Uh, you, you, hold on. Yes, you, you make your own reality. Unfortunately, in relationship to Christianity and the Bible, you can't do that. You can't do it with religion, period. Oh, you can't. All the other ones are made up. What are you talking about? They're all made. They're, they're made up, and, and, and the Bible is not something that's proven. So you cannot spend. It's not. You, it, it is not right to spend taxpayers' money on it. Do you understand what you just said? It's not true. Faith is hope. It's the opposite of what I just said. The Bible is proof. All other religions are not. Yeah, but I'm talking about... Re I know where you're coming from. No, you're not. I'm talking about religion in general. The subject of religion. But exclude the Bible. I'm you, sorry to say. you cannot even. You have to exclude it. Even because it has its proofs. But 
Yes, yes, but even prophecy pro is a proof of the Bible. But mixing mixing church and state, even Christianity should not interfere with politics. Nobody said it did in okay. the Bible. True. In the Bible, you tie the ten percent to the church. For, no tax write off for the for the good of the church. For the people in the church. Not for some not pastor. You to pay. Not for some pastor to stuff his pockets. It's to do the work. And buy a Rolex watch or, or you know, uh, lavish things on himself. That involves religion. The Bible, per se, does not involve religion. It involves what evolved into Christianity. Right. The Roman Catholic Church is not Christian did not come out of Christianity. It came out of the Babylonian mystery religion. Right. And every Protestant church mm -hmm. came out of the Roman Catholic Church. The true church of God mm -hmm. has nothing to do with any of that. It has been in existence since Jesus as a small flock for thousands of years. Different. Different from what you term religion. It's not the same. And the Bible, if you don't know about it, don't know the codes, etc., the, the, the deductions, the uh, 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 the reasonings, not, for instance, what, who are the modern day descendants of ancient Israel? Well, if you don't know them, how will you know any prophecy that pertains to them? You won't. So you'll have to find some way of getting those codes. Right. And when you do get into the Bible, you will see that it dismisses all other religions as pagan fantasies as what they are made up mm -hmm. as you said before now these these um holy roller evangelicals that say we're not living under the law right now we're living under grace and uh because the man was unable to keep the law i what i mentioned was that the law as the ten commandments define what sin is. You have to have laws to define what sin is in good from bad. And when a person breaks one of the Ten Commandments and commits the sin, they're doing it voluntarily. Like, you're not automatically programmed by default to commit the sin. You have freedom of choice. So you're physically choosing uh, to commit the sin. The people you're talking about made up their own religion. They made up their own tenets. Because these are the, these are the rapturists. The tenant that we are not under the law does not exist in the Bible. This is what I'm trying to get through to you and the people. Yeah. There is a difference. These things that you're talking about are made up. Yeah, if it wasn't for the they law. They are made up. If it wasn't for the law, if it wasn't for the Ten Commandments, the, there would be no standard to live by. There would be no definition of a right and wrong, a good, bad, sin. Man does not want that. His mind, the carnal mind, is enmity toward God. It will not listen to God. Ever. Right. Well, then they, Unless then it they, is in, yeah. imbued with God's Holy Spirit. Then they Joining with man's right. spirit. Then he will listen. Hey, then he becomes the elect. The Israelites turned their backs on, on Moses and, and, golden, and created the golden calf. The Israelites were not the, they were not given the Holy Spirit. What they did, that's what they did. And there was punishment at that time, etc., etc., etc. But 
what I'm trying to get clear, which people must understand. Mormonism. Volume, please. Mormonism. Islam. All of the other so-called religions, Confucianism, Hinduism, uh, Jain, etc., etc., they're all made up. They're all made up. Just like Zeus and Mercury and all the other gods and goddesses that people devoted their lives to. Athena, Apollo. They're made up. Poseidon. Okay. Uh, if there's a God, and, and asking that question is how you come to knowledge. But if there is God, there's only one. And He is the Creator. Period. Isn't it amazing how the symbol of the uh, obelisk is all over the world? The shape, the phallus shape of the obelisk. Which what the hell does that have to do with a right religion? No, I'm just saying the, well, it's an architecture everywhere. And, and, and because it's a phallus symbol. It, 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 um, it comes from Baal, I, from what I understand. The but sun god. Phallus. They're all phallus. Yeah. Skyscrapers. The Washington, the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument is a phallus. In the Vatican, there's even an obelisk. In the center square, there's a obelisk. It's a phallus symbol. Okay? Because not all of the people, Noah's family, carried on the true religion once they came out of the ark. So you had goddesses, you had animism, you had worship totems. Worshipping of animals, etc., etc. The golden cow. Baal, Moloch, Abol, Abol, Abol. Yeah, Moloch, the. All uh, of them. That, that pagan religion that they revive, the elitist revive, Moloch. Whatever, but they're all Moloch. made up. That's yeah. the important thing to understand. They're all made up. There is no proof for any one of them. A waste of time. For, uh, uh, take Satanism. God is more powerful than Satan. There's no fight going on between them. Why would anybody in his right mind uh, say, well, Satan exists? Well, if Satan exists, my friend, uh, so does God. And he's more powerful, so why would you be worshiping Satan? You fool. And if there and and if there's uh, if one third of them fell and became demons, then you have to accept that two thirds of them are angels, and they exist too. Uh, 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 but there's no, um, you know, there's no constant uh, war yet. There's no war. There was a war in heaven, and Satan was cast down right. to the earth. And he, he uh, is restored. Right here. And God allows him to do his dirty work for to a reason. Test. To test his elect. Right. Whilst they are here undergoing their qualification to become potential God beings. So the devil serves the purpose. After the thousand years, four to thousand years, years he will be placed in a place where you will not be able to bother anybody. Right. But then after the thousand years he will be loose for a short time to bother. Because people have to be tested. They can't just come to God and say, Hello, God, uh, I'd like your Holy Spirit, and, and blah, 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 blah. no, that, you have to prove yourself. That's what these zealots think you can do, is just have a conversation with God. Well, number one, you cannot prove yourself to God if your God is money, and your church is the Happens to be the case 
of the right wing. So none. And besides, you must be called by God. You cannot go to him. Help him by yourself. Read John. You must be called. Yeah, these, that's why I say the right wing have a That is non-biblical. It is Correct. a cult. Love yeah. of money is an idolatry. And they certainly have put it over on a lot of people, haven't they? That they display Christianity at its best. Even, even so-called pastors that are supposed to know more than me. They are and, worse. And I'm aware of a lot more truth than them. Are worse because they are supposed to be the shepherds they're guiding to, the flock. Right. They're supposed to set an example and That's teach, correct. and they're not doing that. They're teaching lies. That's they are deceived. Revelation 12 9, the whole world is deceived. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to call. Oh, there's one more. Before this gets too old. And people just conveniently forget to Okay, so we have one more. A member of the grand jury that declined to indict Ferguson, Missouri police officer Darren Wilson. Okay. Has filed a federal lawsuit against the prosecutor handling the case. Saying the public has been misled about the jury's deliberations. Represented by the Missouri chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union, a hateful group of people by the right wing, because they tried to bring out the truth. The anonymous grand juror identified only as Grand Juror Doe, mm -hmm. sued St. Louis County Prosecutor Robert McCulloch on Monday for the right to speak publicly about the case. It is the first time the public has heard from a juror in the case. The Grand Juror hints he or she may have voted to criminally indict Wilson. The six men, three white women, six white men, <coughs> excuse me, one black man and two black women who served on the grand jury have been ordered under Mrs. Missouri law to stay silent. in Ferguson of Michael Brown, an 18 year old African American. <coughs> Excuse me again. End. End. Oh. Well, throughout the country, all of the uh, heinous things that are that have been done by our uh, police uh, has not been um, uh, th there has been no retribution for them whatsoever, um, and uh, uh, they just will not indict a police officer uh, in, a, in a criminal case, period. And they can only be sued uh, in, a, in a civil case. Um, so there's no retribution for the victim. Uh, 
And, you know, it's not just um, <clears throat> one or more a, a, a black victim, okay, uh, that ends up in the spotlight on your local news. There are many others that were victimized, females and, too. And dogs. And innocent dogs, pets. Um, they showed a photo last week of this very attractive young female who was also suffocated by I can't breathe. the police, and she never made the headline news. Obviously, there was no video of that. There was no tangible evidence to prove that. Oh, even with tangible evidence, they don't get indicted. Yeah. Uh, there's an article out there uh, showing a tiny, tiny, itty bitty little uh, 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 camera that could be hidden. It's real small, very small. Like uh, I spy, you know, yeah. stuff, and it says something like, uh, "This will change the face of uh, activism." It. Oh, it will be used against protesters, or the other way around. I don't think so because it's being used against the cops now, and guess what? It ain't getting the job done. But if it's used against protesters. I'm sure it'll get the job done. What a, what hypocrisy in our country today? What corruption? Call it what it is. I mean, you could buy. Forget about the teeny tiny camera. You could get a spy pen camera, mm -hmm. high definition too. You plug it in at home. Looks like a regular pen. Well. When you turn it on, the light is on facing you, so they can't see the light. And you could video anything you want without pointing a camera. Just keep it in your pocket and just turn your body mm -hmm. where the action is. But this evidence doesn't work against the police. And even if it even if it did work, what they're trying to do now is make it illegal for you to do that. So you cannot videotape. The police. But it's okay for them to to break the law themselves. Well, that's why they want to continue to do that. <laughs> and victimize you. You know? Yeah. And search you without a warrant. And, um, and uh, if they, they don't like the way you talk or they don't like your face. Oh, when you get stopped by the police. <laughs> and it, it, let's say you're a lawyer. You know your stuff and you bang it back at them, they hate you. They hate you because you're putting them in their place. And they come at you in the first place with a, I am more superior to you attitude. I hear they don't so need... when you come back yeah. at them, they don't like that. I hear they have a, a, a a problem or with or and deep animosity towards firemen. Oh, in New York. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Is you think it's because firemen are looked at as heroes? That's correct. Which they are, because what they do is very heroic. So, but the cops don't like that. No, they want to be the heroes. The, what are they called now? The finest. New York's finest? New York's finest. And the firemen are called New York's... I don't they're know. called something else. Well, they rescue... that the equivalent, you know. Firemen save lives. Yeah. That's their main purpose. I, I have never seen it, but... Stop fires. Uh, and, you know. Maybe somebody should put it out there. The amount of lives that firemen save every year compared to... Cops. Yeah, well, sometimes. Or how many cops? How many firemen are killed in the act of duty, and how uh, many cops are? Sometimes firemen do things that are not 
so great like when they had that fire in the, in the Jersey Shore on the boardwalk they uh, I don't know I'm not sure if it was Point Pleasant or Seaside Heights but <laughs> they, they allowed all of the older uh, stores one after the other they, 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 they left the fire so all the older stores can get destroyed mm -hmm. and then when it was getting close to the new buildings then they put it out it's almost like you know uh like almost like well let the insurance company pay up well, probably because it was cheaper to put up new buildings yeah 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 go through the crap with the old ones exactly exactly but anyway that's it take care have a uh, safe and enjoyable week, uh, weekend and week. And, and we'll have we pro solved many of the problems of the world today? You know? Well, we definitely did a, did a great discussion of it. Okay, so, you know. You know Take and, it home with you, folks. And, and uh, I think we're naturally witty and entertaining. So, you know, uh, but, but you know what? Some people out there, some uh, many simpletons out there, they they don't have anything constructive to contribute, so they have to tear you down. That's correct. So you don't uh, you don't bother with those yeah. people. Yeah, or it could be just jealousy on their part. Don't matter. You know, just don't bother with them. Yep. All right. Say good night. Good night.